Okay, what if I told you that in the deepest layers of quantum reality, time itself can actually be negative. It can pick up a negative sign. And here, this is not just some kind of science fiction. This is a staggering conclusion drawn from recent high-precision experiments involving light and atoms. And by itself, this is kind of mind-blowing. Because for many centuries, we've always treated time as a kind of a constant and as a kind of a flowing stream that only goes in one direction. Cause precedes effect. And for example, when a car enters a tunnel, the duration it spends inside a tunnel must be always a positive number. Anything else in this case would be nonsensical. Yet some of the recent modern experiments from just a few years back reveal that the timeline for particles can be way, way more complex, potentially violating some of these deepest classical conclusions. And so in this video, we're going to be delving deep into this new research on the negative time, focusing on this recent study from the Steinberg lab at the University of Toronto, that essentially started these experiments back in 2021. And specifically here, we're going to track these discoveries from a kind of a strange theoretical quirk to actual physical measurements involving photons and atoms conducted at the U of T, the university where I spent my graduate years back in the days. But before we start, we obviously have to discuss exactly what this negative time means and how this is not really time travel, but instead just a quirk of quantum world. And so first, we need to conceptually understand the idea behind this negative time by describing the concept known as group delay. And this is essentially how this concept actually started. These effects usually occur when some kind of a pulse of light, referred to as a wave packet, travels through a highly dispersive material, such as, for example, a cloud of atoms. And it's kind of symbolized in this image. And here it helps imagining that the light packet is sort of similar to a wave in the ocean. And so it's the peak of that wave that defines the arrival time. Or in more scientific terms, it defines the group delay. But for certain materials, especially when the light is tuned extremely close to the atomic resonance or the natural vibration of the atoms themselves, scientists notice something impossible. In many cases, the pulses peak seem to emerge from the material before the entire pulse had even entered. It's sort of visualized right here in this image created by the BBC. And in some sense, this can be analogous to, I guess, a line of cars entering a tunnel. But in this case, the central car, representing the peak, emerges from the tunnel before the car even entered. And so, if this was a classical situation, you would basically assume that this is some kind of a time travel. However, physicists quickly offered a non-sensational explanation that did not involve anything mysterious. They argued that this was just an illusion caused by the reshaping of the wave packet, because in this case the tail end seems to be strongly absorbed by the atoms, making the overall pulse somewhat attenuated and reshaped. And so the leading edge of the pulse, which contains less resonant light, passes through more easily, with the remaining energy coalescing into a new peak that appears earlier than expected. And so basically here it's a kind of a wave illusion, because of the absorption from the atoms. And so since here we're constrained by the speed of light, and nothing can travel faster than light, here the negative delay describes the location of this newly reshaped peak. And so for a very long time this negative delay was generally dismissed as a kind of a mathematical quirk, or basically a kind of a funny wave reshaping as a result of atomic interaction, and so not physical negative time. But the story does get just a little bit stranger, when we move from measuring the delay of the pulse to measuring the duration of the interaction, which is the approach that the team from University of Toronto decided to take. Here physicists Daniela Angulo and Josiah Sinclair begin asking a more subtle question. When a single photon passes through a cloud of atoms, how long does the photon spend as an atomic excitation? And so in this case, they wanted to really focus on a single object, ignoring the idea behind group delay. And since in this case photon is a quantum particle whose energy doesn't just zoom past the atoms, but is actually stored inside for just a little bit, usually causing them to enter what's known as the high energy or the excited state, here we're essentially measuring what's known as the photon's dwelling time. Or I guess you can call it resting time or something. How long does the photon spend inside the atom? And so in some of the earlier experiments from 2022, Researchers measured the duration which they called the atomic excitation time, but only looked at the photons that successfully passed through the atom cloud 
after spending some time inside the atom. And so here they wanted to see how long the atom stayed in the excited state after interacting with the photons. And normally when a photon excites an atom, the atom's electron jumps to a higher energy level for at least some time. And here, like in many different quantum experiments, they used the atoms of rubidium, rubidium that was then excited. But what surprised the scientists was that for some photons, the photons that did pass through the atoms, the average time the atoms spent excited appears to be negative. Meaning that the photons seem to spend less than zero time exciting the atoms, suggesting that the photons left the cloud before they should have been able to. And this astonishing result was dubbed excitation without loss, revealing a somewhat complex, strange history of photons passing through absorbing media. And more importantly, this challenged the idea that this was just some kind of an illusion, as suggested by mathematical explanations. There seemed to be some kind of an ultimate paradox involving negative duration, which of course meant that time just behaves differently in quantum mechanics, or at least appears to act differently at very small scales. And so on top of these theoretical propositions, we now have another paper from 2025 that takes this concept just a little bit further. And so here Kyle Thompson and the international team, whose names you see on the screen, provided us with a surprising link. The atomic excitation time experienced by a photon seems to be exactly equal to the net group delay experienced by the photon, with its equivalence even holding when the time by itself seems to be negative. But what exactly does this mean, and I guess more importantly, what does it mean for a measured physical duration to be negative? Well here, if we return to the tunnel analogy, this is like measuring carbon monoxide levels inside a tunnel, which will tell us a little bit more about how many cars are inside the tunnel and how long they spend there. But it just so happens that our values for carbon monoxide turn out to be negative. And so here this negative duration cannot be explained by simple reshaping of light pulses, the way that the negative delay was explained, and has to be something different. It seems to be a genuine quantum phenomenon that's now referred to as the anomalous weak value. And so in simple terms, these negative times seem to be the result of some kind of a quantum interference. A photon passing through the atom seems to basically follow multiple paths simultaneously. And so here path 1 might be passing through without interacting, whereas path 2 temporarily excites an atom, which first produces an atomic excitation, but then releases a photon once again. And so when the light frequency is very close to the atomic resonance, there is a direct interference between these pathways, specifically a kind of a destructive interference required for the photon to be transmitted, which also causes the resulting average measurement to then pick up negative sign. Although here it's important to understand that it doesn't mean that the photon spent minus 5 seconds doing something, instead it means that the probe that measures everything registered a sign reversal. With additional experiments from a few months back, confirming a lot of these assumptions and recreating them using different regimes, with all of them discovering these negative time values. And so just to summarize, in this 2025 experiment, researchers once again used rubidium-85 atoms and then illuminated these atoms with the resonant laser light in order to measure the atomic excitation time. But they also used a separate weak beam in order to conduct the calculations. And when the atoms become excited, the probe beam picks up a very tiny measurable phase shift representing an atomic excitation. And so then by measuring the time integral of this phase shift, focusing only on signal photons being transmitted, they confirmed several major previous predictions. And so after testing this using various pulse durations and various cloud densities, every single one of their findings discovered at least some of this negative time delay, with a negative group delay producing maximum results for some of the most narrow band pulses. Or just to rephrase this, they managed to confirm that this is a physical effect and not some kind of a visual illusion or some kind of a mathematical quirk. And this is critical because it elevates a previously dismissed mathematical curiosity into an actual physical measurable quality. And so it suggests that the negative value of group delay and a lot of similar measurements seem to have some kind of a physical significance that's just not well understood yet. But in terms of understanding this in terms of classical physics, well this is actually connected to the idea known as contextuality. Which means that the outcome of these measurements really depends on the entire experimental setup and especially the context of the setup, and not just a single particle we're trying to measure. And mostly because when it comes to just a single particle, there seem to be a lot of quantum interference effects that will make any kind of an individual measurement sort of pointless and even impossible. And so once again, this is not a claim for time travel. Here the laws of relativity still remain intact. 
And instead, the point of this research is to force us to confront the fact that our common sense experience of time, motion, and duration is really not enough when trying to describe quantum particles and quantum effects. Because in this case, the negative duration seems to be a signature of quantum interference dictating the strange history of photons that managed to escape the absorption. Or basically, some of these photons seem to produce the excitations without really interacting with anything and leaving the atoms before they even enter it. But in terms of practical applications, well, that's really where we have to kind of stop. Right now, these findings, if ever applicable, could maybe be used in quantum computers sometimes in the future, possibly for some kind of a quantum memory or some kind of a quantum storage. But in reality, at least for now, this is just purely theoretical and purely an experimental curiosity. But a curiosity that once again reminds us how absolutely bizarre the quantum world seems to be. And so this work on the negative time demonstrates that when we stop relying on the classical intuition and start following the math, even when the math seems to be kind of impossible, quantum mechanics prove it to be real. And that's, I guess, the exciting part of this research. Now, where this leads, we don't really know yet, but this is, of course, just the beginning because it only really started a few years back. Which means that if there are some additional discoveries, we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few additional videos. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.